right, y'all. As of 11.47 p.m., everything is in the books. Everything is set in stone. The card is officially done. The card is officially set. And before I actually get into my predictions for Survivor Series this Sunday, I gotta say this, man. This is probably one of the best go-home shows I have ever watched in a very long time on both ends. Raw definitely did have a lot of amazing matches as well as a lot of great returns. We end up seeing Roman Reigns come back and rejoin the Shield, making the Shield hold again, whole again. Then we end up seeing Triple H in a while, him being the fifth member of the actual um, Raw um, Survivor Series team. And we actually had a mediocre main event. But other than that, it was in my hometown, even better. That's all I almost have to say about that. And there was also talks about Paige being behind the scenes. We saw no Paige. But despite all that, it was a really good go-home show. They did an amazing job making you really want to watch Survivor Series, which is what these shows on cable are supposed to do. And that's what they did. When it comes to SmackDown, by far, there was more hard-hitting moments when it comes to preparing for this than anything else. We had not one, but two invasions from SmackDown to Raw which really did make it seem like they, they really meant business. And I kind of, I'm kind of with Shane. They've been the B show for far too long. They want to be taken seriously. And I'm under, I mean, Shane has every right to feel that way. He does. They treated SmackDown like the, the, well, I, I'm trying to think of a comparison that won't insult people. That's just what I'm thinking in, in these days. We insult everybody. But despite all this, SmackDown's been treated like the unwanted person, the unwanted person in the room <laughs> for years, you know. Um, but other than that, man, I mean, for years they have been treated like they just haven't been wanted at all. And I understand why they really want to be taken seriously. It makes sense. It all fits in Survivor Series. They did an amazing job building that up. But we have not one, but two belts that changed hands. Two major belts at that. We had the women's title that was just won by Charlotte Flair tonight. The queen. Okay. And then we had Ric Flair come out. Uh, yeah, I seriously got choked up. I'm not going to lie. I got choked up. But then the week before, we had the modern day Maharaja lose his title to AJ Styles. The Georgia boy from, Jack from Gainesville. The Georgia boy from Gainesville. I'm sorry. I gotta have my Georgia pride. I gotta support my Georgia boys. I'm sorry. I do. I support AJ Styles 100%. Not just because he's from Georgia. It's because he is one of the best workers in this generation. But despite all that, he beat the modern day Maharaja before they went to India. That's huge. He lost his streak. <laughs> to AJ Styles. That's huge. There were more hu historic, monumental moments on SmackDown than Raw. By far. Even the main event for SmackDown worked. Now, I know this sounds like it's a review, but I'm just, I have to throw it out there. I'm sorry. The main event, the finale for um, SmackDown was far better than Raw's finale. Because we've been waiting for weeks when they're going to invade SmackDown, and they finally did. It was predictable, I'm not going to lie, but they did it well. They did it well. They showed they meant business, and boy, did they ever. Honestly, amazing way to finish off SmackDown. SmackDown, in my opinion, for this week is chief. But other than that, for Survivor Series, they made the car far more interesting with these updates. They really have. Now, when it comes to the actual... um kickoff match and the kickoff match is going to be for the cruiserweights does anybody really care and i hate to say it but they really haven't treated that belt very well i mean even though enzo amore is probably one of the most interesting characters on 205 live at this point why have kalisto why get his hopes up why bother you know you're not going to give him the title again because he's that boring it's just what it is you can change his music you can do whatever you can with him but he is just boring they haven't done Luchas right in a very long time. They haven't done Luchadors right in a very long time. I doubt that they're going to do it right this time. I'm sorry. They're not going to give him the belt because Enzo is far too too interesting. And it'll be bad for business if you give it to, to Kalisto. It's just what it is. And that happens to be the kickoff match of Survivor Series. 
So it's probably the match that's going to be the least watched. So why even predict it? We know Enzo's going to keep the belt. And I'm still waiting for Enzo to actually um, customize his belt. He hasn't done it yet. I don't really know why. But other than that, man, Enzo for the win. Let's move on to the actual card that we care about. Now, I'm on the reel. There are so many matches on here that's going to be amazing to watch. I can't even nominate what's going to be the match of the night because it's going to be so many. I think there's going to be at least four matches of the night. That's my overall prediction of this. But honestly, I want to get into the first match of the night. Well, that first match of the night before the kickoff. But I want to get into one of the championship matches. And we actually have all champion versus champion matches. There's only going to be one that has a possibility of changing hands. And that happens to be the Cruiserweight title. So that's going to be the only one that has the belt up for grabs. Everyone else is a champion versus champion. We have one standalone with the Shield versus New Day. And we have two, eliminate, two elimination matches. Two classic Survivor Series elimination matches, the men and the women's. So I want to get to IC Championship match first. The IC Championship, the IC versus the US. You got the Miz versus Baron Corbin. IC versus US. Okay. This match is not going to be called because of the actual wrestlers. It's going to be called because of the belts that they're holding. Let's be real here. The IC title has far more worth and far more weight than the U.S. right now. Now, John Cena did the most amazing job in breathing new life into the U.S. title, making it more important than the main belt at the time, which was held by Seth Rollins. But now, despite my disdain of Baron Corbin, because I do not like him at all, I have to say that when it comes to um, when it comes to the possibility, I don't know, but anyway, when it comes to the possibility of him actually defending his title. I can imagine Baron Corbin actually defending his title a lot more than The Miz would. Despite that. But either or, neither one of them are doing a good job for the belt. They're not. I would say The Miz has a lot more notoriety and he's a lot more interesting than Baron Corbin is. And it's not because of my personal feelings towards the guy. It's just what it is. The Miz is a far better talker. He just is a far better talker than Baron Corbin could ever be. Baron Corbin is like... The bully that you meet at elementary school that says, you're dumb, and then walk off. While The Miz is more elaborate in his disdain towards you. To where he will break it down into adjectives, verbs, and nouns. Like, he will literally just go into detail on how much he hates you. That's how good The Miz is on the mic. So, pretty much, I have to say that just because they're great mic talkers, in my humble opinion, it's the belt's worth. It's what weighs more, the IC title or the U.S. And it's the IC belt that has a lot more worth than the U.S. And there's no way that they're going to have the U.S. go over on the IC belt. And it because pretty much the Miz, and I did say that it was pretty much about more of the belts than the actual wrestlers, but going back and thinking about it, the Miz has a little bit more weight than Baron Corbin could. So the winner would definitely be the Miz, Pretty much not only because of the belt he's holding, but because he has a little bit more notoriety than Baron Corbin. Just saying. I know that sounds kind of weird to say because I thought it was because I said it was about the belts. But other than that, it kind of is both. It's about the belt and it's also about the, the person holding it. And the Miz has a lot more weight. So yeah, the Miz for the win. And that's going to be one for Raw and zero for SmackDown. Now, let's talk about the women's championship match, which is going to be one of my favorites of the night, seriously, because she's going to give the goddess a run for her money. The, the Raw Women's Champion, Alexa Bliss versus the SmackDown, the newly crowned, as of tonight, Women's Champion, Charlotte Flair. Thank God she just, she just got rid of Natty. Like, she just pushed her aside and took her place. Thank God. But other than that, <laughs> I will say that this is going to be a far more interesting match. Alexa Bliss is only as good as who she wrestles. She's pretty much the female version of Randy Orton. In my humble opinion, she's amazing on the mic. She's a blast on the mic. She will blast you into a thousand pieces with her words. Her wrestling skills are somewhat average, but they're not horrible. But she is as good as who she wrestles. She actually put on the best match of her life with Bailey, So that shows me that she actually can have some go. Charlotte's going to give her a run for her money. 
But Charlotte is a freaking flair. She's a queen. Do you really think that Alexa Bliss is going to get over on Charlotte? Here's the one thing that really does kind of trouble me a little bit. Alexa Bliss, in my humble opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, leave in the comments if I am, I think Alexa Bliss is the only woman on the Raw roster, pretty much in the Raw in the, in the women's division, not just for Raw, but in the women's division, that actually has a finisher. What I mean by that is that that finisher is so protected that if, if she nails it, it's over. The DDT, that it happens to be her finisher, has not been kicked out by any woman on the Raw roster so far. I don't I can't remember if she had the DDT for SmackDown, but in my opinion, right now, she's the only woman on the Raw roster that has had a finisher that has not been kicked out of. And that's the DDT. So if she nails the DDT on Charlotte, it's over. And if Charlotte kicks out, I will be shocked if she does. Because so far no one has kicked out of the DDT. If she kicks out of the DDT, she has it. 100%, she's going to win it, period. In my humble opinion, I still think the queen is going to beat the goddess, and I think she's going to dethrone the goddess, and I hope she does. And in my and after this momentous win, by having all this, this hype about uh, Ric Flair's documentary that ESPN did, which is amazing, I might add, and I think you guys should really go and watch it, and all of this hype about her Second Nature book, which I am going to buy. I'm going to actually add that to my collection that I have. Because I do have China's book. I'm going to have hers too. But other than that, I really think that Charlotte's going to beat her. I think that Charlotte is going to beat the goddess. The queen will dethrone the goddess at Survivor Series. That is my prediction. Charlotte for the win. Straight up. And it also all depends on whether or not she kicks out of the DDT. But I still go for Charlotte for the win. So it'll be one SmackDown, one Raw. Now we got the Shield versus the New Day. Our one standalone match of the night. Honestly, for some strange reason, all of it, it it's kind of weird how they have uh, uh, on the webpage, they have like one side red, one side blue, but this is just black, but it's the shield, so duh. But other than that, I really do not think it is no way, shape, or form the New Day is going to beat the shield. They're not. I'm sorry. The Hounds of Justice versus the Unicorns of Positivity? No. Not, not, not by a long shot, man. I mean... Each guy has sim has similarities. You got a high flyer with Kofi Kingston and Seth Rollins. You got a straight up enforcer, a forcer brawler type. Well, pretty much an enforcer like Roman Reigns and Big E. And then you got the unpredictable wild cards, which are Dean Ambrose and Xavier Woods. They each match each other perfectly. So as for wrestling styles, it is hard to call it down the middle because they're far too similar. But when it comes to actual um, the fact that the Shield is a bigger deal than the New Day, which they are, and the fact that the New Day is pretty much posted as heels in the situation since they're part of SmackDown, the Shield is not going to lose here. So my vote goes to the Shield for the win. And if I might add, when it comes to the actual Go Home show, before the Go Home show, SmackDown's been booked as heels. The entire SmackDown roster have been booked as heels. Heels always have comeuppets in the very end. They always do. And Raw, you know, they're booked as faces. And that can pretty much tell you right there what's going to over the overall um, picture is going to be for the Survivor Series. But other than that, I'm going to move on from there to the Raw Tag Team Championship. Raw, team cha Raw Tag Team Champions versus the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Say that a thousand times fast. You got the, you got the Bar versus the Usos. I really wish they call them the Bar because they really need to. But other than that, you got... The stiff, hard-hitting brawlers of the bar. And then you got a kind of a mixed bag between high flyers and brawling, which is the Usos. I really see the Usos more as high flyers than brawlers. But good grief, does Cesaro have that stiff European uppercut? And if you kick, get kicked in the stomach by the bro kick, it'll knock the wind out of your sails. The bar is far more hard-hitting than the Usos. I love the Usos' aggression. I love the fact that they're champions now than their first time run, which was lame. But by far, it's gotta be the bar. I gotta take, I gotta give it to the bar because the bar, their hits look painful. 
And there's no way that they can outlast that. I'm sorry. They can try, but I don't see them winning here. The vote is definitely going to go to the bar. So it's going to be two Raw, one SmackDown so far. Two Raw, one SmackDown. Because you got uh, you got the IC belt that's going to be for Raw, and that's one. Then you got one for SmackDown for the women's title. Then you got two for the Shield versus the New Day. So two versus one, and then you got three and one for uh, the Raw Tag Team Champions. So, so far, Raw's going to have three. SmackDown's going to have one so far. Now, we have the Universal Championship. All right. Let's add a fourth one right there. A fourth one to Raw, man. Now, don't get it twisted. I love my Georgia boy. I support my Georgia boy. He is one of the best in-ring workers in this generation to date in AJ Styles as the WWE Champion. But with this champion versus champion match, the Universal the Universal Champion versus the WWE Champion, Brock Lesnar all around is a beast. I'm sorry. He's proven it time and time again that he's a beast. I am not saying that AJ Styles is going to lay down for Brock. By no means is he. He's going to give Brock Lesnar the fight of his life. And by the end of that match, he's going to get mad respect from Brock Lesnar. By far. This is David versus Goliath incarnate. This is what it is. Like, you cannot describe a better Dave versus Goliath picture than this match right here. AJ is purely David. Goliath is purely Brock Lesnar. This is probably going to be one of the best matches to witness ever. <laughs> but by far, when it comes to reach, Brock Lesnar beats him. When it comes to height, Brock Lesnar beats him. When it comes to overall strength, Brock Lesnar beats him by far, but that doesn't mean that AJ will lie down. AJ will do his best to try to take the beast down strategically. The, but the, here's, the, here's the rub when it comes to AJ Styles. AJ Styles' finisher slash signature move is the Styles Clash. There is no way that he can pick up Brock Lesnar for the Styles Clash. No way. He can try... But there's no way he can plan it well enough to put him down. He can't. He's far too big. And honestly, the only move that he can use to knock him down is the phenomenal forearm. That's the only move he can use in his arsenal to put him down. Not not take him not um, put him away, but put him down. There's so much that Brock can use. We know he does a suplex, German suplex, and also the F5. But let's be honest, man. Brock is just a strong dude. He is. But that does not mean that AJ Styles will not give up the fight. He's going to fight with all of his might. And by the end of the night, even though Brock will beat him, he's going to get mad respect from AJ. Straight up. It's going to be one of my favorite matches of the night because it's going to have that most heart. And when you see the champ give you respect, that shows that you've earned it, man. Seriously, and that's how I'm seeing this match going to play out. I don't think AJ will win, but he's going to give him a hell of a fight, by far. And it's going to be one of my favorite matches because of how it's going to play out in the ring. But yeah, Brock Lesnar for the win, 100%. Now, let's go into the 5-on-5 five -five matches. I'm going to start with the women's because we kind of have a rub here. Now that Charlotte is no longer a part of the 5-on-5 five -five team because she is now the champion, there are two ways they can actually go about here. And these two ways can predict the direction that it's going to go for SmackDown. Because so far, it's four on one. <laughs> Raw got four. SmackDown got one. So it looks like that SmackDown might not win overall, but they're going to give one hell of a fight to Raw. Since they pretty much kind of invaded them twice. But like I said, they're booked as heels. But as for the women's five on five, I got to say this. It could be either Paige or Natalia that's going to fill in that slot. Because right now, Charlotte is gone. So we got one more person to fill in that slot. At the point on the SmackDown side, so far we have Becky Lynch, who's the team captain. We got Carmella for some reason. And we got um, uh, we got Tamina and we also got Naomi. We need, a, we need somebody with technical prowess. We need a good striker or a brawler or someone who is very technical. Because you got... 
You got a high fly. I guess you got a high flying bra. I don't know if she does fly anymore. I haven't really seen her go off the top rope anymore for Tamina. And honestly, we got we got a. I really don't even. I can't really figure out the styles of the other three, but I can figure out Becky Lynch. And you know, Becky Lynch definitely is. Um, she not only is she pretty hard hitting. She goes for the arm bar. She goes for a, a lot more submission moves. But other than that, man, I'm not going to go too much in, in the whole technical thing. Because, honestly, it's really hard to read these women. But the one thing I can say is that it, is go, it can go either way. If Paige actually is the fifth member of the SmackDown team, SmackDown is going to take it. If Paige doesn't show up and you got Natty instead, then SmackDown will lose. That's pretty much how it's going to go. And I hate to go for that route that it all depends on that one member. But that's how it's going to go for the women's team. All these women are very talented. But by far, when it comes to the best card, the Raw has it. I'm sorry. We've known that SmackDown has been scraping bare bones for a very long time now. Ever since SmackDown started to become live. And the draft shafted them in the worst possible way. They got shafted. They barely have a roster to fill up anything. Let alone a match. But at this point... Raw has top billing when it comes to the women's division. You got Asuka. You got the boss, Sasha Banks. Legit boss, Sasha Banks. I'm a, I'm a fan of hers. But, uh, but you also got Nia Jax, who can be a beast. Not book this one, but she is a beast. And you got Bailey, who, in my opinion, happens to be the wild card. Seriously. For the matches that I have watched Bailey participate in, she can go. She's, I would say she's the dark horse of the match. But by far, everyone's going to be looking at Asuka. Because Asuka happens to be the, um, she happens to be the reigning retired champion of NXT with the longest reign in history, by far. And she was one of the most dominant wrestlers in NXT to date. One of the most hard-hitting feuds she's ever been in, ever. Now, I will say that I don't know whether... I guess Asuka happens to be a face here, which kind of bothers me because I love her heel gimmick. I loved it. But honestly, people are going to be looking at Asuka. So if Asuka gets put away, that's it. Raw's done. I would go into Alicia Fox, but I can't. I can't. I don't see the logic of even why she's there. There could have been far better leaders than her. I'm sorry. She was just randomly picked. Maybe because she's been there for 12 years and she's been literally treated like a ghost for that long. Maybe they're just doing it out of sympathy. I have no idea. She's not bad in the ring. She can be stiff at times, but she's not that bad. But I would not pick her as a leader. She's by far the least person that I would pick because she don't like one of her teammates. And something's telling me that she's going to screw her, them over. She's going to screw them over by going against Sasha. I see that happening. But it also depends on the fifth member of SmackDown's women's team. If Paige happens to be the fifth member, then they're winning. But if Natty shows up, they're screwed. <laughs> I hate to say that. This is what it is. Because SmackDown is dealing with bare bones. You got Carmella filling in the slot for crying out loud. You know Carmella is not that great. She, she has potential to be great. Just like how Lana has potential to be great. But by far, she's not that great. She has a submission move that looks like a really bad yoga pose. I'm sorry, it just does. And it doesn't look like it hurts. It don't look like it hurt at all. So when you've got Carmella on your team, you need somebody to kind of counter that. She's going to probably be the first one to be eliminated. I'm telling you right now, Carmella's going to be the first one to be eliminated. And if... And I, I'm, I'm telling you. But the thing is, everyone keeps thinking that Carmella is going to cash in at Survivor Series, which is another wild card. It could be a possibility that she co goes in as a SmackDown Women's Champion after beating Charlotte. <laughs> it's something I'm going to throw out there, man. It's a possibility that she might just cash in her, her, her uh, Money in the Bank briefcase at Survivor Series against Charlotte. I, why am I seeing this happening? There's been eyeball moments before. I wouldn't be shocked if she tried. Seriously. But for my overall prediction of this match, I think that Paige is going to be the fifth member. 
And if Paige the fifth member, then chuck that up for SmackDown. SmackDown will be two on four, even though they don't, they're not going to win the overall Survivor Series. But they're going to give it one hell of a fight. Now, how many times I've said this? Three times? But other than that, let's go into the men's champion, the, the men's five on five. Now, the men's 505 is practically set. As of tonight, both of uh, the, as, as of tonight, the um, the actual match is set. For the fifth member being Triple H in place of Jason Jordan. Thank God. But other than that, we got Kurt Angle for the Raw side. We got Kurt Angle, Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, Triple H, and um, uh, Samoa Joe. And on the SmackDown side, we got Shane McMahon. We got, um, now we got John Cena because he was just declared on Twitter as the fifth member. So we got John Cena on Team Blue. We got Shinsuke Nakamura, um, Randy Orton, and Bobby Roode. Now, in my humble opinion, I would say that this is somewhat even because it's a, it's like an equals, it's an equal amount of brawlers to the same amount of strikers. We only got one striker on each team and we have three brawlers on each team. Um, possibly four, including the captains. About four brawlers on each team and one striker. So when it comes to techniques, it's kind of dead even. But when it comes to brute strength, raw, raw got them, man. I mean, now, before I get into the actual predictions, I really do have beef that Triple H is in this. I don't want him on my screen. I've seen him in matches so far. He cannot go anymore, and he keeps trying so hard to keep having that momentum up. Triple H should not be the go-to guy to make stuff interesting. They should already have future stars that could take his place than him being in it. Can we talk about WrestleMania 32, people, with him versus Roman Reigns? The match that nobody wanted to see that he barely struggled to get through. He struggled to get through that match. I'm going to tell you this right now. And I guess you can throw this in as one of the predictions. Kurt Angle, Shane McMahon, and Triple H are going to be part-timers in the ring. Which means they're going to be out probably a quarter of the time. Somehow, something's going to knock them out. And I know that Triple H is going to break out the Enforcer, a.k.a. the Sledgehammer. But I doubt he's going to prevail. Paul Levesque, a.k.a. Triple H, however you're going to kind of throw it in there, is a smart man. He knows how to find new stars. He knows how to put over new talent. I would not be surprised if he's just there just to put butts in seats. But he's going to take a step back. I pray to God he will. But don't forget, he does have a massive ego. And sometimes his ego gets the better of him. I'm hoping that he's out at least a fraction of the time. Kurt Angle's had a broken freaking neck. He's not going to go toe for toe for a long period of time in that match. He's going to get knocked out somehow. He's going to roll out to the ground or Stretch is going to come out and, just, and he's going to get hauled off. Shane McMahon, same thing. Shane McMahon's going to be in the ring for maybe about, I would probably say maybe a good eight minutes. Probably maybe six, six to eight minutes and then he'll be gone for a while. It's going to be all Cena and it's going to be all Strowman. Cena and Strowman and Samoa Joe. You're going to see them more in the ring than anyone else. You'll probably see Bobby Roode try to get in there every once in a while, but he'll get knocked out probably by Strowman. You'll see Randy Orton in there a few times. So it's going to probably be maybe Randy Orton and John Cena, as well as Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe. Finn Balor, I think Finn Balor and Shinsuke is going to have a stare down. They're going to have a stare down. Everybody's going to be like, oh! And then, you know, they're going to probably either start fighting or then they're going to get knocked down as a teaser. That's just what I'm seeing so far, which might happen. I don't know. I could be wrong. But other than that, for the overall winner of this entire match is going to be Team Raw. Team Raw is booked as faces at this point. The faces always win. They always get their, their comeuppance in the ring, except for one person that seems to somehow doesn't get their comeuppance at all and her husband happens to be in the match y'all know who i'm talking about but other than that all i'm saying is that team raw is definitely going to take it here but smackdown once again for the fourth time i'm saying it maybe fifth smackdown is going to give them one hell of a fight so more than likely it's going to be probably five two i think maybe five two or five three other than that i don't think that they're going to win here
They're just they're just not. I'm sorry. But um but but yeah, that's my overall thoughts. I probably got the numbers wrong, but I know that Raw's gonna be they're gonna have the dominant numbers. So Raw's definitely gonna be the winner here. But other than that, guys, those are my predictions. Let me know how you feel about some Survivor series in the comments below what your predictions are gonna be. I'm curious to hear that. And also look out for my review on Sunday when all of this is over. But other than that, y'all, I am done here. I will see you later. Peace out.